Hello there, I'm Jack S. Perro. Losing Emily was like losing the sun in the middle of the day. Everything went dark, cold, and pretty much unbearable. Six months have passed, and the house still feels emptier than a politician's promise. I tried filling the void with TV, but it turns out there's only so much reality you can handle when your own is broken. That's how I ended up in the weirdest pet shop in town. It was called Parrots & Co., and looked like the kind of place where you might accidentally buy a cursed monkey paw or a mogwai, if you're not careful. The shopkeeper was this old guy who looked like he'd been around since parrots were dinosaurs. Need a friend? He asked, eyeing me like he knew I was one bad day away from talking to my furniture. Yeah, something like that, I mumbled. He pointed to a green parrot sitting in the corner, glaring at me like I just insulted her mother. That one's Paco, she's special. Special? Sure, why not? I wasn't exactly swimming in better options. So I took Paco home, figuring that if nothing else, at least she wouldn't argue with me over what to watch on TV. Turns out, Paco had other plans. The first night, as I was reheating leftover pizza, she squawked from her perch. You really gonna eat that, Jack? Again? I nearly dropped my slice. Did... did you just talk? No, I'm doing mime. Yes, I talked. Now put down the pizza and eat something that didn't come out of a box. I stared at her. How do you know my name? She rolled her eyes. Yes, the parrot actually rolled her eyes. Because you keep muttering it to yourself like some kind of sad soap opera character. This was my life now, taking dietary advice from a parrot with the attitude of a New York cabbie. But strange as it was, Paco started growing on me. Her unsolicited advice wasn't always welcome, but it was usually right. One night, I was sitting on the couch, mindlessly scrolling through TV channels, when Paco piped up again. Jack, seriously, stop watching that garbage. You need to get out more. Sure, Paco, I said, sarcasm dripping from my voice. I'll just go out and have a deep conversation with the lamppost. Or you could start living your life again, she shot back. You know, like Emily would have wanted. That shut me up. She was right, of course, but it still stung. I sighed and reached for the remote, ready to switch off the TV when I heard a faint creak. My eyes darted to the front door. It was open, a little too open. Did you forget to lock the door again, genius? Paco asked, her voice low. I frowned. No, I'm pretty sure I locked it. Just as I stood up, the door swung open the rest of the way, revealing a man in a ski mask holding a crowbar. I froze, my heart doing a bad impression of a drum solo. This was bad, really bad. Don't move. The intruder growled, stepping inside. Okay, okay, I said, holding up my hands. Take whatever you want. The TV remote's on the table and the pizza's in the fridge. Just don't hurt me. The intruder looked at me like I was the world's biggest idiot. I'm not here for pizza, you moron. Well, that's your loss, buddy. It's pepperoni. Paco, bless her feathered soul, decided this was the perfect time to speak up. Hey, ski mask, you better leave before things get real awkward for you. The intruder blinked, staring at the bird. Is that parrot talking? Yeah, she's a real chatterbox, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. You don't want to mess with her. She's got connections. The man hesitated, clearly unnerved by the fact that a parrot was mouthing off at him. Paco, sensing an opportunity, went for it. You heard him, tough guy. I know where you live, and I'm not afraid to squawk about it. Is this some kind of joke? The intruder demanded, now looking more confused than threatening. No joke. Paco replied. But here's the punchline. Police are already on their way. I made the call when you walked in. Slick. I almost laughed at the absurdity of it all, but then I realized something. The intruder believed her. He glanced around the room, suddenly looking nervous. You're lying. He muttered, but there was no conviction in his voice. Am I? Paco said with a smug tone. Why don't you wait and find out? Or, better yet, Make like a banana and split. It was like watching someone wrestle with their last brain cell. Finally, the intruder backed up, eyeing the door. You're crazy, both of you. That's what they said about Einstein, I quipped, 
trying to hide my relief as the man slowly retreated. But look how he turned out. The intruder took one last look at Paco, then bolted out the door like his shoes were on fire. I quickly locked it behind him, leaning against the wood, my heart pounding in my ears. Paco fluttered over to my shoulder, giving me a gentle peck on the cheek. You okay, Jack? Yeah, I think so, I replied, still catching my breath. How did you do that? Paco was silent for a moment. Then she said softly, Because, Jack, it's me, it's Emily. I froze, not sure if I'd heard her right. What? I know it's hard to believe, but somehow when I... When I passed, I ended up here, in this feathered body. I've been trying to help you, to guide you, but I couldn't tell you until now. I couldn't let that guy hurt you. My throat tightened. Emily, is it really you? Yes, Jack. And I'm not going anywhere. Tears welled up in my eyes, but I managed a shaky laugh. So, my wife is a parrot with an attitude problem. I guess life really is full of surprises. Hey, I prefer the term feathered force of nature. Whatever you say, Paco. I mean, Emily. Now, about that pizza. I smiled, finally feeling a sense of peace I hadn't known in months. Emily was still with me, in the most unexpected way possible. And as long as she was here, I knew I'd be okay. Even if my life had turned into one giant bizarre sitcom. Thank you for staying until the end of the story. If you enjoyed this and would like to see more, give us a like and subscribe to our channel. It will help us a lot. We highly encourage you to watch our other videos or click on the next recommended video. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.